meeting Tuesday, and Tuesday evening, uh, we was informed that there would not be an animal service that, uh, or Monday, excuse me, they was going to shut Churchill's doors. In the meantime, we had talked with Talkins County uh, to help cover this end or their end of the county, which they did. Uh, we had uh, Southern County EMS on standby to help cover emergency traffic in that end of the county. And as of right now, Hawkins County is still covering uh, the Churchill's area, and Southern County is still offering us assistance if we need it. And that's where we're at right now. Um, we've provided coverage up there um, since the time of closure and some before that. We've provided some service for them in the meetings. Uh, since they closed, we've had every station staffed uh, at the time of the closure you know, we was trying to organize a few things, but there, yeah, the areas was covered. What kind of financial burden did you put on Hawkins EMA? We figured up yesterday it's adding about $23,000 to the payroll. Uh, so we're looking, with our billing company, we're outsourced billing. We had pretty quick turnaround rates on that. So we're looking at maybe, what the billing company provides me at most a 30 day turnaround period before we start at the most before we see the reimbursements come in from that area. And the call volumes up there is, you know, just, it's just the, like, the, and this comes from the building you know, we would be looking about 30 days at the most to see that money start to come back in. And we are, you know, we've checked our uh, accounts and, you know, we're sufficiently covered for that. So part time employees did you hire? I think a total was like 12 for a church or sorry, rent 20. Uh, yeah, 20. Rent 20. We've had to get an exact number on that. Do you have enough revenue or live credit set aside to be able to provide supplies well, yeah. for each of those units? Yeah, we've got. We've got enough supplies right now to stock several units in the day. We keep a we keep a real good supply as far as supplies. Because I think the consensus is there's fear that this is going to put such a strain on you, yeah. you're going to end up the same boat with Churchill, right? And, and we've looked at that. We we looked at that fear. I mean, do you have any of your board members here? Yeah, it, it'll, it'll be tight, but when we get the money start rolling in, you know, we don't have as much overhead as uh, other people, it's, you know, around here. We, we're we very conservative. <laughs> we, you know, we, we can work off of less than what other uh, organizations do. But we kind of look back and we can do it. I don't know how long, but like you said, you know, but, but it looks good right now on paper. I'll put it that way. Well, we figured we've got about a 30 day cushion to play over that 30 days, is what we're figuring. Cause what is your cushion. ultimate goal with the situation? Is it My ultimate right? goal is this puts us in a great situation to have a county wide service. I mean, the signals service through the county, there's no arguing over lines just you know move trucks around where they need to be to cover the areas not have to wait till you're hollered at and that's my ultimate to go i've heard some comments from the commissioners in the past that like to have one organization this is your chance <coughs> well we would too but you know talking yesterday finances was an issue which you know we've We've done a lot of looking too, and since then, and also, and the, you got to remember, we found out about this one. You know, I had a two-hour notice to have three trucks covered, and luckily we had people on standby since this started. We've had crews on standby every morning, and had crews on standby for days. And I didn't have three crews on standby, but I had in case you know somebody called in, they couldn't cover something, and. So we pretty much have two hours to organize to cover this entire yeah. thing. So we've kind of been bombarded with all that, trying to dig back into some sort of financial stuff. We sat down yesterday evening and looked at what we did in fact we made sure the citizens was covered. That was our first priority. 
guess what? <coughs> I'm a little bit concerned it was a few months ago when, you, when we talked with us, and I think Mr. Gillum might have asked the question about expanding out the substations right. where the regulations were. And at the time, you said you didn't have the money or the means to do any better than what you were doing. But today, you stand in front of us, you're willing to take over the whole upper end of the county. What you're looking at there is the tops. The tile volume. We're very interested in discussing um, coming back here and looking at a franchise agreement similar to what Churchill had um, was granted by. <coughs> So, you know, that's that's what we want to do and that's what we were hoping to talk about today, okay? Because we did demobilize a bunch of units from or three units from Hawkins County and, and lay several people off and we would need to initiate that process again to get going. Um, but I can tell you as uh, you know, I think what you're seeing across different counties um, in Tennessee is you're seeing the the smaller companies dissolve um, and it's getting tougher and tougher in healthcare. Um, reimbursement's a challenge. And what we offer as a larger company is the um, economies of scale. So for example, if we were to come into Hawkins County and start up, we could very rapidly bring in several HR people. We, could, um, we wouldn't have to stand up a new billing company. We already have that infrastructure in place. Um, the dispatch portion of the non-emergency calls, we have that infrastructure in place. Um, so we can turn around, uh, we have the, the capital backing to buy ambulances and come in and, uh, and start operating. But we would like the franchise agreement to be similar and mirror the franchise agreement that was granted to Churchill UMS, which was a, a long-term agreement and it included, um, if I'm not mistaken, they've been receiving funds from the county to the tune of about $30,000 a year. We would like to be, we would like that same offer. Are you still willing to sign a bond for me that says you won't walk off and leave Hawkins County? That, would be, that is not uncommon in other areas that we're in. Um, I, I wouldn't see, I don't know why we wouldn't do it with uh, uh, some assurances from the county. So if, with a, a three-year franchise agreement, for example, that would be reasonable. So if you got a three-year franchise, you would? Uh, likely, yes. I, I don't get this for day off. I can't, I, is that sure, what I get this for I understand. I, I understand, but there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about the county. We don't know the call volume. So there's a lot of things that we want to look at to, to ensure that it makes sense because we want to serve the, the county to the best of our ability. So there's just some information that we need to pull together, but we, we would do that very, very quickly if the county was interested in pursuing a, a relationship with us. Mr. Reds, can you run that plan by us again so we, please? I'll be shocked by the end of the day because I'm talking about a real thing. There's an each dollar in wheel tax generates $53,000 in revenue. So a $20 tax is a million sixty thousand, roughly. Uh, currently, the uh, fire departments, the uh, allocation of budgets, 267,000 is what's budgeted this year. You've got 275,000 on that. $100,000 to the rescue squads, which is currently in there. Uh, you've got 6,000 for Red Cross, which I would classify as public safety to an extent. $25,000 to the Humane Society, which actually increases a little bit what they're wanting, and that's definitely an issue throughout the county. Uh, that takes away by doing those, and just saying $400,000 allocated to EMS. Plus you would have a 250,000 or more buffer to help support that. And that actually even pulls down what you've got in the budget right now, uh, contributions, that's $465,000 right now that you have in public safety contributions. So that part goes straight back to the general fund. <coughs> I know everybody don't like the wheel tax, but I'd be more than happy to pay $20 wheel tax to know that if my family's in an auto accident or somebody's <coughs> having a stroke, that the propensity of somebody being there within a lot of time is going to happen. And you, you, we would be able to then control where stations are located and uh, employees. And that you secure the livelihood of the employees. I, I don't think I went and I requested of Hawkins County Board 
probably a couple of years ago, if there would be any animosity or struggles of becoming a county run service, would we have to fight a battle there? And I was told no, that for the good of the, the county, that they would be more than happy to do whatever they had to do to serve the citizens of Hawkins County. Personally, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, there's a lot of things that will have to be addressed. This is not an overnight fix, but it's certainly a start. And it's like it's been stated, we're going to be, we continue with what we're doing right now, we're going to be right back here. And it may be six months, it may be a year, but I'll see you back here sometime during that time period, I can guarantee it. 